I have the lab open here and these are all the regular files that I included. I didn't edit them at all. These are the originals. You do need to make sure that the drawing panel is just called drawingpanel.java. If you've downloaded it several times, there may be a parentheses one at the end of it. Um, and that's going to cause some errors. So you want to make sure it's just drawing panel, capital D, capital P, dot Java. And then it's in the package Molt Lab or whatever your package is called for your uh, project here. And you can see that has to be the first line here. If you take that line out and you open your other right here, I'll hit save. I should get some errors because uh, Nepins doesn't know what a drawing panel is. Yes, drawing panel exists, but it's not in the same project. That's super important. And the only way to fix that is to go back to drawing panel and go package um, to spell it right. I'm copying the name here. You have to do a, not a fast double click, but a slow double click. All right, so now it's in the same package and this error should disappear. Okay. I've included this print multiplication table. This is from your textbook. So you can uncomment this and it will print in the console a multiplication table. Uh, this was just me messing around trying to draw a string. That's not important. I do want to look at draw row right now. And I'm going to draw two rows. Let's get crazy. I'm going to draw, this is the column. And that's the size. Let's look at a uh, draw row. And I want to get the navigator open. So that's window navigator or control seven. Um, if it doesn't appear down here, it may appear like this. You click this right here and it sets it. And you can also drag uh, these around if you want to and put them in different places. All right, I'm doing this so I can just double click print row and go right down to print row, right there. Oh, I don't want print, I want draw row. All right. I'm gonna delete all this right here. Let's get crazy. So I want draw row to be really similar to print row. So I'm grabbing the for loop from print row. I'm gonna put it right here. Now I intentionally use the same row and size here as I had right here, just so they'd be consistent. Now I'm, this integer right here is called I, but what it really represents is the column number. So it makes sense to call it column. So control R is rename. I'm going to call it call instead of column because I'm lazy. Hit enter. It just renames it all to column. Now I don't want to print. What I want to do is draw uh, the string. So somewhere up here, I want a, a similar method to this, or uh, the same method, but I'm going to print out some different stuff. And if you're ever unsure, I know the graphics objects G, G dot, and you can just scroll and see what you want to do. And I see draw text. Oh, come on. What is going on? Draw a string. That's what the problem is. Here we go. So that's what I'm going to use. There's a argument zero, which is a string. That's the string you want to draw. Then it's an X value and a Y value. Uh, I don't know why the font is so big here, but that's the string to be drawn is arg zero. Arg one is the X coordinate, arg two is the Y coordinate. Hopefully you see that these are horrible names for parameters. Uh, arg zero, arg one, and arg two are the most useless uh, names. I would have called it probably string X, Y, but anyways. All right, what string am I gonna draw? I'm just gonna put a, uh, put a minus sign. 
Uh, now, Nepping just guessed what I want here. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, the X coordinate depends on the column because you're going across when you're increasing the column. The row is the Y coordinate, and that's how far down uh, when you're drawing. So I'm just going to leave it like this for now. And then all I'm going to do is draw row with one max value and three max value. So I'm going to call draw row twice um, and then sleep. And I'm going to comment out exit so I can stare at this and talk for a minute. It's going to go a little slow the first time you run it. Oh boy. So I see absolutely nothing. Fantastic. Okay, I figured it out. It's a little bit funky, but what happened is the minus sign actually has white space, several pixels of white space down here. And I'm just going to change the symbol to an underscore. And we should see. There we go. All right. So their spacing is way too small. So what I'm going to do is just do 10 times and 10 times. Otherwise, it's just going to go one pixel at a time as column goes up by one and one pixel at a time as a row goes up by one. Now this should be spaced out a bit more. And you can see it's getting better. Now I have width and height already as variables. So instead of going 10, the column number is using the width because it's a horizontal. And the row is using the height. I'll run with that. All right, getting there, getting there. So we got row one, row three. Obviously, you'd want to put numbers in here. So I'll just fill it up with a bunch of zeros. Um, all right, so how do you get the right number in here? Well, good news, the right number is right here. So all you need to do is grab that number. But of course, draw a string needs a string, not a number, not an integer. So I have that pad method. This should give us the right values. Remember, we're doing row one and row three. We're about to do all the rest of the rows right now. Okay, so I'm gonna close that. Draw table will draw all the rows for you. However, if there's a problem, it draws them all at the same time, so you don't know uh, which row or rows had a problem. So I'm doing Control Shift down to duplicate. I'm just gonna go This is not okay to turn in your project like this because uh, this is inefficient. However, when you're trying to problem solve, when you're building your project, it's totally okay to have 10 lines of code. This is the most obvious case to use a for loop I've seen in a while, but this way I can comment out any of the ones. Maybe I'm just having a problem with the first and the last row so I can just easily print out the first and the last row like this. There we go. So you see the first row, the last row, and they're correct. Uh, we can uncomment that. Uh, another nice trick you can do is you can pause. So I'm going to use panel.sleep. You could drop it right here uh, in between each row, but it's probably better to just drop it right. Maybe I'll do it right at the end of the draw row. And I'll sleep for a tenth of a second. I think that'll be a tenth of a second. I better drag this window quick. Oh, I'm not fast enough. So this will make it draw one row at a time. 
and you see that it's uh, delayed between each one. Um, so that can be one way to see the table get built up slowly. And if I take this and move it inside the for loop, run it again, you'll see that it will pause in between each number and you can see your table get built up slowly. This can be useful to term for determining where there's a problem. And you can put the sleep wherever you want, change the amount, and hopefully that will let you see where your problems are because it gives your brain some time to think and also see what is being drawn in what order. And so you saw where I put the sleep either inside the for loop or outside has a much different effect. And you don't have to wait for this whole thing. You can, of course, quit it and probably a more reasonable number would be at 100, but you can put whatever number you want in there. Okay, I hope you, this helps you get started. Uh, my advice for your vertical lines when you wanna draw them is I would do it right inside the for loop because basically every number you draw needs a small vertical line next to it. So I would do your vertical line right here And your horizontal lines, I would probably draw them of one above the for loop and then one below the for loop right there. All right, when you're finished and it's working, you just call draw table once instead of all of these draw rows. And of course, draw table will call draw row for all the different values of I.